without much ado, our first topic for today is the financial viability of processing nipa palm sugar. And this will be presented by uh, Mr. Antonio Peralta of the Foundation for Rural Enterprise and Ecology Development of Mindanao or Freedom. Uh, before that, po, can we request everyone? Sa unaan po tayong lahat, okay lang po ba? So let us all welcome again, Sir Peralta. Po. Good morning uh, to everyone. Uh, thank you for uh, attending this uh, session on uh, PIPA-based products uh, and agro-processing. Uh, I would, before I start, I think it's very important that it's not just the numbers that we are going to discuss this morning. The manner of the presentation will be more of telling the story why this thing happened. It's not just by accident but by uh, really by the desire to help our coastal communities. Uh, this, uh, uh, on uh, the second part of it, we will discuss the business canvas model. What is the business canvas model? That's basically your roadmap into implementing a, a project like NIPA. And the third, we will discuss the financials that go with it. Okay? So we will start. Uh, Nipa sugar uh, processing and production can be expanded to coastal communities. Nipa is a coastal crop. It's an overlooked crop. You try going to the beaches and more or less you'd see that along with your mangroves, you'd see Nipa palm stands. And for the longest time, we have always seen why uh, the utilization of this crop has only been used for low value uh, products. And this is for the uh, preparation of, let's say, your NIPA uh, roofing materials. Hanggang dyan lang po. Then, we've uh, seen communities that produce vinegar. That's good. But still, it lacks the value add in helping these communities really maximize the full value of what your NIPA palm stand can uh, have. Then, NIPA palm sap can uh, be responsibly harvested year-round. You tell me of any crop here that you can harvest every day. Can anybody tell me? Anybody? Tuba? Every day? Every day? Are we sure on that? Because we've seen some communities medyo bumababa na yon productive capacity niyan. But nevertheless, uh, I guess you're right. Tuba is a cousin of uh, Nipa Pam. Halos mag, they belong to the same family except that uh, the other one is grown inland, can be grown inland, the other one is coastal. Okay? So, the plan is to establish uh, Nipa Pam Sugar as an alternative livelihood to coastal communities who will be motivated to take proper stewardship of the production sites. Now, uh, before I go into that, uh, have you ever thought that why Nipa? Because the Philippines has the third largest NIPA stand in the whole world. Uh, number one is Indonesia, number two is Thailand, number three is the Philippines. So it's, a, it's an unused uh, resource that we have. Hindi na kailangan tanimin yan po. Nandiyan na It's there. Of course, you can uh, propagate this if uh, needed be. But uh, for now, we have more than enough. So, the implementation of a NIPA, the Palm Demo Farm, is reinforced through capability building activities to prepare the people's organizations in the community, utilize the byproducts as added income stream. So, part one is uh, especially for those seasons where uh, uh, NIPA SAP is not as productive uh, as it should get, but it continues to produce we have uh, augmented uh, farmer or fisher folk activities to include crab fattening as an additional source of income. So you can also come up with uh, uh, planting of chili, ginger, and pepper and can be utilized, this can be utilized for special vinegar products. And the activities are done through a farmer climate field school which we help set up. Bucket climate, because we cannot, we cannot anymore 
escape the reality of the impact of what climate change is about. Whether we like it or not, we will have to deal with it. Now, going back to that uh, uh, aspect of uh, uh, productivity, you name me a crop, as I said, that you can harvest every day. Now, mention me, tell me a crop that's climate resilient, 100% climate resilient. And the first thing that comes to mind is Nipa. Because whether there's a storm, whether there's a drought, it just keeps on producing. It's not dependent on rainwater. Because seawater or the rivers, river water itself can take care of it. Again, as I said, this is a coastal crop. So, what we did was we undertook a community baseline survey to establish benchmark, benchmarks. This is pretty much uh, standard. We upscaled production. Una, manual lang po yung ginawa namin. Now, we started mechanizing. The financial model that we will discuss later is based on a mechanized uh, version dahil napakababa po ng returns if we use manual. No? Uh, Nipa palm sap can also be uh, processed into sugar, syrup, no? vinegar, wine, bioethanol for processing. So the benefits uh, of uh, processing Nipa-based products are threefold, namely creating alternative livelihood uh, enterprises, promoting ecosystems-based adaptation against climate change hazards, protection and conservation of coastal marine resources. For the communities that want to engage freedom, the only thing that we really ask is for the community to in reinvest back 10% of their gross income to planting mangroves. Because we found out that the mangroves, replanting and restocking our mangroves from our eastern seaboard coastline will be the best defense against storm surge and uh, that has already caused a lot of damage uh, to our economy to give you an idea every time that we have a storm two percent of your gross domestic product is uh, lost and another two percent of your gross domestic uh, product gdp natin will be used to help rehabilitate this community so all in all you're looking at four percent uh, effective cause of uh, climate uh, change, no? what climate change has done to our communities. And the coastal communities are the poorest communities of all, even based on the surveys uh, undertaken by PSA, you'd see that most of these provinces are, or most of these uh, municipalities are located in coastal uh, communities. Most of them belong to what you call type 4 typologies, which are the uh, natin eh, kung sa BLGF yan, poor revenue and poor expenditure category. So these are the list of uh, our country's uh, economic uh, makeup. Carlo. Next. Pardon us, there is a technical error. Anyway, while uh, they're fixing it, uh, we have already, just to uh, uh, give you a uh, uh, heads up, we have already initiated inventory taking together with the help of DA Bar in identifying uh, certain provinces, among which uh, are uh, the provinces of uh, Bohol, uh, Agusan del Norte, Butuan City, uh, as well as uh, Calapan in Oriental Mindoro that uh, have uh, basically identified and uh, we have uh, taken in an inventory of this and we estimate for that three provinces alone, you have 3,000, over 3,000 uh, uh, hectares. Uh, the economics of, uh, market of uh, producing NIPA starts with a very good farmer-based organization. Kailangan po malakas yun ating uh, farmer uh, organization that would uh, undertake uh, this, no? Hindi basta na sabihin natin, oh, we will just put up a project just because the farmer organization 
is uh, is there. No, so anyway, uh, we're back. I apologize for that. No, so again, as I said, we undertook resource inventory and economic valuation, and we also prepared a climate resilience and disaster risk reduction management plan. So what we are trying to do here is introduce that concept that you cannot divorce the matter of especially working in vulnerable communities yun aspect of climate change because whether you like it or not that will really hit you so the thing now is to act together in tandem with the livelihood projects that we want to pursue as in this case nipa then capacity building in ecosystems based adaptation and production product and enterprise development and upscaling of nipa based products and of course knowledge management So, as I said, there's an estimated 3,925.1 hectares of three provinces pa lang yan. We estimate it's more than that. Uh, but uh, the resources that's given to us has uh, only confined uh, us to this. The inventory for Davao Oriental and Agusan del Norte is ongoing. So, makikita natin yan. Uh, based on uh, the inventory we did, uh, Bohol has the highest at 1,902. Uh, hectares, uh, followed by Oriental Mindoro at 1,646, Occidental Mindoro 376 uh, hectares. So, initial inventory shows that there is at least an average of around 10,000 nipa stands per hectare with matured flowering and fruiting of appro approximately 12% or 1,200 nipa uh, stand per hectare. Each NEPA stand can produce at least one to two sap liters per day with a lifespan of at least two to three months. Then there is an average of 200 uh, trees per hectare per day, which can produce a minimum of 200 liters per day or 72,000 liters per year with an economic value of uh, 360,000 pesos per hectare. Hindi na masamayan with the farm gate price of 5 pesos per liter for processing of only vinegar and wine. If to be processed further to syrup and sugar, the economic value can be doubled or even tripled. So this is over and above the value of roofing materials that can be derived from the NIPA plantation. Assuming that we will tap at least 30% of the 3,925 hectares, it can have an economic value of 425 million only for vinegar and wine processing. Assuming that at least two persons can manage one hectare, it can create more than 488 jobs, only at 30% of NIPA areas. Each person will tap 100 NIPA stand at any given time. This is the perfect example, as we can see, in creating green jobs. Nandiyan na po yan. It's a question really of uh, calibrating uh, our uh, thought processes to start looking at uh, NIPA as a good alternative to other coastal activities. Una-una, fisheries, we know. We have challenges in it. Nagkakaroon na tayo ng overfishing. Matagal na po yan. Your fish catch rates only account for about 1.8 or 1.5% uh, of your gross domestic product. Napakaliit. We used to be in double digits in, in that regard. In the early 60s, in the early 50s, when fish was very abundant. Now, uh, assuming that each NIPA stand can produce a minimum of one uh, liter per NIPA stand, each tapper can earn a minimum of 250 pesos per day. So, the value chain that we constructed starts with the farmers and tappers. We have the NIPA, which produces the NIPA sap, and producing uh, uh, roofing materials. This is on the farmer level. Then from there, it gets into fresh uh, sap and fermented sap. Kung fresh sap naman, uh, the cooperatives, traders, and the companies uh, process this into syrup, then to sugar. Sugar naman, you can convert this to soap or from the fresh sap, it, it becomes, uh, 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 you can convert that to soap also. The same with a fermented sap, except that it gets converted to vinegar and wine. No? And uh, for the consumers, ang kalabasan po nito, for this is the sweetener to various products, condiments uh, uh, for cooking, and alcohol and bioethanol. So, dito na lang, makikita natin yung 
uh, the amount of money that flows. Basically, starting at 10 pesos per liter, then 200 pesos per liter with a one, uh, one is to seven uh, conversion uh, syrup, and then 300 uh, pesos per kilogram, uh, which is one to one, uh, no, for sugar. And the same, uh, and for uh, uh, fermented sap, which is your really your vinegar, it's about 10 to 15 pesos a liter for 45 days. Now, uh, for uh, uh, wine in Lambanog, it's about 30 uh, to 40 pesos per liter, which is, uh, takes a period of about 4 to 7 days. Ito po yung uh, ginawa namin na uh, simplified value chain uh, map. So, you're looking at now, this is just basically on the farm level. Pag-uusapan natin, dalawa po yan. Ha? One is the production on the site, the NIPA site, and the other one is the processing of uh, NIPA sap into NIPA sugar. So you have two cost models that we're looking at. The first one for uh, this, no, uh, we divided it into two main products, uh, vinegar and uh, syrup then converted into sugar. Starting with vinegar, ang um, farm gate process natin is about 5 pesos per liter. Uh, daily income is about 200 pesos. Consolidator normally makes 20% of that. So, ang value add, malaki rin. No? Kung titignan natin yung, daily, yung, yung uh, column ng daily gross income, the one in the middle, that tells you already uh, about the kind of profits that you can make. No? From trader, normally it's 100% from the farm gate. So, nagkakaroon ng doble. Makikita natin yung value add, umakyat to 800. Then the retailer, umakyat siya to about 1,000. So, the same also for syrup sugar, no? makikita rin natin, uh, malaki rin ang uh, gain, ang mga financial gains nito. So, you're looking at uh, fresh up at 200. Uh, syrup, it's about additional 25. And another, uh, for sugar, another 25 uh, pesos. So your uh, daily gross income goes up from 2,000. Then as you convert it to syrup, it goes up to 5,000. Then sugar, nagiging 7,500 po siya. So for a net value add of about 2,500. So ito po yung business model canvas natin. This we have to show to you because this is the model that we believe uh, communities should follow. It's not a question of producing. Madali lang yung production. But what about the other things that get into production that affect the viability of the project? Time and again, it's always been production-centric, production thinking. Hindi natin naisip kung saan natin ibibenta ito. Then we complain later on. The prices are too low. Because one, we don't have the economies of scale. Second, we're not even organized into clusters that can produce the kind of products that the market would need. So, we start with Key partners, no? Sino mga partners natin? Key activities. What are the main activities? The resources that we require. And the most important is the value proposition. What are we really doing here? And why is this important? And customer relationships, channels, and customer segments. So, under number one, in customer segments natin, ito po yung general public. These are the hospitals, restaurants, coffee shops, and other production-related purposes that buy it. Then, yung mga distributors and resellers, these are healthy alternative stores, supermarkets, and wellness centers. Yung value pr proposition is that this livelihood shields uh, protected areas, especially for vulnerable areas like uh, yun mga, mga coastal communities natin that have less mangroves that are planted to it to protect it from uh, storm surges. Nipa palm sugar is a healthier alternative and mangrove replanting. Then, the delivery channels are really your freight delivery. So, sino po ito? Ito sila Air 21, LBC, no? JRS in certain cases. Then you have the distributors and the resellers and the corporations that uh, are part, part of your uh, distribution channels. Number four, itong customer relationship. This establishes a partnership with community-based organization, cooperatives, and co uh, uh, corporations. So, your revenue stream natin for the first year, we estimate that to be something like about uh, 1,701,000. 
uh, with a net income of about 36 pesos 900 uh, for the fifth year aket yan to we we will show you later the how we arrive on this this is just a summary uh, you have uh, on the fifth year a gross uh, revenue of 2.4 million with a net income of about uh, 404,000 pesos. Your key resources here are your fresh nipa sap, sap syrup processing facility, syrup uh, sugar processing facility, management and labor. Then for your key activities, you have the sap syrup processing, syrup sugar processing, marketing, mangrove replanting. I emphasize mangrove replanting because this this uh, uh, fact has always been overlooked. Call it payment for environmental services, no? But at the same time, it helps restore the balance of your biodiversity areas, no? Pag hindi natin ginawa yan, pati yan ni pa, eventually will get affected. So far, sa ngayon, hindi pa affected. Pero madami ng challenges ng coastals. Uh, number one there is really your coral bleaching. Number two are the threats brought about by your storm surges. And number three, basically because of coral bleaching, wala na tayo masyadong fish catch. Your fish, fish catch rate has really gone down. So, uh, yung consolidation ng mga products na ito is an important key activity also. For number eight, key partnerships. In this case, we have uh, DA Bar, for which we are very thankful to. No? Uh, it's not that I'm plugging for DA Bar here, but uh, without an institution like this, I don't think we would have even reached this point where we are. No? Then we have Biofin, no? Biodiversity Finance. That's a UNDP DNR project. Then you have uh, community-based organizations and cooperative, of course, our friends at LBC and Air 21 that helps uh, deliver the products to where it's needed. And of course, us in freedom. So, Ito po yung production revenue uh, and, and revenue estimates natin. So, ito yung major assumptions. So, for our revenues, our NIPA palm sweetener produces about 25 kilos per day or 525 kilos per month. Selling price, lagay na natin sa 270 pesos per kilo or 5% incremental increase every year to cover for, let's say, increases in gasoline, to increase uh, increases in other uh, cost factors, no? Then, cost of operations. Days of operation per month is 21 days. Uh, raw materials is about 10 pesos per liter during lean months and 8 pesos, uh, uh, no, I'm sorry, in the lean months po, yeah, that is uh, uh, for the normal months. Yun, uh, uh, 8 pesos, uh, no, I'm sorry, 10 pesos for the lean months, 8 pesos for the months where there's just too much uh, production. Then general and administrative expenses. Operating expense is about 77,000 pesos monthly. Depreciation is 13,310. Administrative is about 8,000 uh, pesos, no? Utilities 15,000 pesos per month. Personnel is about 32,000 pesos per month. Fixed assets. Uh, well, we assume for this model, napaka-importante po ang investment in machineries. For your mixer, and for your dryer. Bakit? Because the experience namin, nung ginagawa namin to manual, and we were using solar drying, hindi pantay yung, pag yung pagdadry ng product. At kuminsan, because coastal areas yan, the afternoons are normally uh, rainy periods. Maulan. So because of that, you cannot dry. And because of that, you are delayed in delivering your commitment to the market. It would make more sense at magkano naman lang yung dryer? It's only about 30,000 pesos. And then for uh, your uh, uh, mixer, it's a little bit more expensive, but there are programs of the government from DTI, yung Common Shared Service Facility, which you can avail, provided that you are a uh, association or a cooperative. Magtutulong ang DTI sa inyo yan. Then, uh, the large ticket item here really is really your machineries and equipment, the one time yan. A building is about 800,000. And yung ginawa namin ito, we had to take into consideration FDA requirements because hindi lang tayo gagawa ng building for the sake of putting a processing facility. We have to more or less match this with the requirements of Food and Drug Administration. Remember, we're in the business of selling food. 
and uh, we have to follow the rules of uh, FDA. Kung hindi, uulitin natin lahat yan. Mas mahal yan. So we suggest that you do it right on the first go. You save more money on that. Then, pre-operating expenses, 350,000. So, ano po itong pre-operating natin? These are the inventories that you undertake in your area. Because it would be hard for you to estimate the productive uh, or your production capacity if you don't know your inventory, your NIPA inventory. So, mag undertake ka ng inventory for that. No? Uh, again, this is one-time expense. So, ito po yung ating parang uh, uh, projected the revenue uh, assumption summary. Makikita natin ito. All of these are, uh, we will provide to you as a copy. Uh, you can uh, obtain this from DA Bar. We're sharing this with you. This is a project funded by uh, DA Bar. No? So, wala na, all of these are really fairly transparent naman. No? So, makikita natin sales per month. And then, uh, makikita natin for Nipa Sugar alone, you're looking at 1.7 million to about 2.4 million. But keep in mind, you're looking at a 10 hectare facility. 10 hectares lang yan. And this is not something that you even have to plant because nandiyan na yan eh. It's a question of maximizing the uh, resources that you have on your land. Apart from doing coconut farming or rice farming, uh, you might as well uh, start looking at NIPA to augment your income. So, for the first uh, a year, uh, ito yung mga net income numbers natin. Although, ito makikita natin, oh, who would want to work for 36,000 pesos? Remember, as a net income like that, you have to start somewhere. Hindi ka, God, we have to take out that mentality. No, because this is small, you have to understand that you're starting your business. May learning curve yan. And when you have that learning curve, and you have the, what you call, the economies of scale, na... Madamihan na ang production yan. Then you will see an increase in your uh, in your uh, income, no? So uh, so cash flow na natin, net cash mo goes up to two hundred thousand on the fifth year. It more than triples uh, to six hundred one thousand four hundred eighty-seven. Your pre-operating expense is only just a one-time expense. So makikita mo, ang kadamihan kasi ng iyong cash outflow dito, it's more of buying the sap. Yung sap na bibilhin ninyo from the farmers, and that goes to the farming community. All of this go to the community itself. No? So if you look at the net sum effect, everybody benefits from this. No? So balance sheet wise, makikita natin dito, uh, we assume that yung current liabilities natin is paid in cash normally ang uh, treatment niya because this is not really what you call a large enterprise. By definition, this is what you call a micro-enterprise uh, uh, company. So, makikita natin na uh, uh, more or less asset-wise, it will go up over the years. The same with your uh, equity, stockholders' equity. So, for freedom, this is what we do. Agriculture and Fisheries Studies, uh, Business Development Services, Environmental uh, Research and Management Services, Light Engineering and Rural uh, Management uh, and uh, Infrastructure Design Services, Project Monitoring and Evaluation, Impact Assessment. How are we doing on time? Okay pa? So I hate to uh, really, I'd like to spend more time in engaging you in an open forum. Uh, a lot of this information you can get uh, from the A bar, this will be provided to you on request. You can also visit our booth. Kami yun nandoon sa right uh, right hand uh, side of uh, the entrance. Uh, we're the first booth that you can see, no. And uh, for those who don't really understand, asino ba itong freedom nito? We are the foundation for rural enterprise and ecology development of Mindanao. Take note: we always balance livelihood with ecology. It has to be like that. It has to follow that model because the cost of ignoring environment will be very expensive in the long term. Thank you and good morning.
Um, you can it. Um, sir is now po, uh, okay with your questions. Si mga question po ba tayo? Huwag po tayo mahiya. Tanong na po natin habang nandito po po si sir. We can entertain two to three questions po. No questions? Sir, yes po. Punta po tayo sa ating mic. Can we state our name, sir, and the institution? We're connected. Hi, I'm Mario Andayo from uh, PFIC, uh, Tabaco City, uh, Chairman of the Board. Ang akin pong question ay uh, kung ang may pa po bang uh, ating kukuna ng SAP ay hindi po ba siya maapiktuhan? kung daily siyang you know, how ilang ano siya? Hindi po. Uh, kung ang question ninyo uh, ma-affect ba yun, oh, hindi pa natin. Yung... Hindi po. Uh, meron yan silang process, especially yung mga kumukuha ng uh, SAP niyan. Minamasahe pa nila yan bago uh, bago nila, bago sila magtatap. The reason for doing that kind of a cultural practice is that it increases the output coming from the NIPA stand. So, uh, if you don't do anything about it, palagay natin, just leave it like that. Ang one thing about NIPA, it, has, it is an invasive species. It, it has a tendency to take over the environment pag hindi mo nabantayan yan. At yan, tubo ng tubo lang. So, you know, it's something else that when we discovered this, sabi ko, wow, ang laking impact nito, especially for our low-income areas, no? Where we work. Kasi makakatulong talaga yan sa uh, uh, poverty elevation, so to speak. Pero going back to yung, kung mo, hindi affected po. Sa mga nagawa namin na uh, production, we've been doing this thing for about almost four years now. We have not received any incidents na talagang nagbaba. Provided, yung puno na pipiliin natin, hindi po yun masyadong matanda na. Because yun, uh, production na yan is uh, certainly not the same as a younger uh, tree. No? Or a mature tree. Okay? Okay, sir. Sinabi mo kasi na magmamanggrove planting tayo. Oh. Kasi I, I think it is not, uh, ano, naihalo natin yung mangrove. Baka kasi tatalunin yung nipa ng mangrove. Mm. Siguro sa ibang area. No, I, I, I think it's the opposite. Ang mangrove, kasi, <laughs> ang, ang mangrove, nakita namin, ang problema lang kasi why we're doing this inventory because DNR and BFAR never treated uh, in their inventory ang mangrove pati ang uh, ang ang uh, nipa as one crop hindi po yan magkaiba talaga yan and that's why we're doing and taking the initiative of doing this by uh, counting uh, uh, the mangrove mang uh, rather than uh, nipa separately yes thank you Any more questions? Uh, we would be more than happy to uh, answer you. Yes, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Um, Mr. Kaparinyo po from Filmec. Um, Minabangit yu po, sir, na yung investment cost sa building around 800,000. Oh. And the processing equipment are around something around 600 or 700,000. Mm. Mm. May we know the, the, the size of the building and what equipment uh, include, include, includes the composition of the processing plant? The building that we designed is uh, for, uh, with, with a provision to increase our production from 3 to 5 tons. Because sa tingin namin sa business model, namin, Kung gagamitin lang natin na uh, i-design mo lang siya, ikakap mo yan siya ng 1 ton. And what concerned us was uh, nakita lang namin na uh, 40 hectares lang yung natap namin. And yung area where we're in, we had about close to almost 6,000 hectares. So, wow. I mean, that's a huge uh, thing to look at, no? A laking uh, processing kwa niya na kailanganin mo. So, ima-match mo rin yung resources that you have, yung resource level mo 
to the design of your plant. Hanggang saan natin makakaya yan. But the first plant that we help set up, what of course cost less than that, about mga 300, 400,000 lang. Simple yun. Pero hindi pumasa sa FDA. We had to put in a lot, spend a lot of money to just make sure that we are compliant with FDA uh, regulations. No? Pati yung uh, uh, light, fi light, light fixtures, even the door handles, they, they really, uh, when they went over to our facility, they pointed that out to us and we had to change it para talagang compliant sa kanila because I think what they're trying to do is make it closer for us to become ISO certified. So even our QMS, yung quality management system namin, uh, is already compliant with your IS. So sir, the question po kanina ay the size of the building. Yeah. Uh, for 800,000, eh, is that around something 100 square meter, 50 square meter? Because a uh, 100 square meter, I think it will just cost 8,000 pesos per square meter a building. Yes, kasi ang malaking cost nito, it, the, the building facility is located in the city of Butuan. In the city of Butuan, you have so much nipa along the Butuan River. Oh, yes, sir. Yun ang ginamit namin base. Of course, that will be contingent on the property cost per hectare where the nipa facility is located. Of course, if it's in the city, you have a lot of advantages because shipping more, shipping wise, it becomes easier for you to move your products compared to if you put it in a very remote area, yung, trans, yung transport cost mo eventually will be more than 30 to 40 percent of your product cost. So, kung titignan natin yung economics niyan, baka it might make, make more sense for them to produce a, to, to a certain le level like syrup, for instance, no? basta lang ang travel time is less than four hours, we can process that right away. Because over than that, it will compromise the quality of your product. Yes, sir. Uh, for an 8,000 pesos per square meter, mm. so can we satisfy that as a QMS or ISO 35? Yes. As 8,000 pesos per square meter of a building? Yes. Kasi ito naman ginawa namin is two stories. Hindi ito, hindi ito uh, uh, single story. Ah. Two story ito. And the reason because we wanted to maximize that with the second floor eventually producing oh, yes. yeah. yung, your first floor kasi sugar yan. Oh, oh, oh. Your second floor is more for the vinegar and uh, uh, syrup production I mean, for especially for the export markets. We're now even looking at uh, partnering with a Japanese company to start looking at uh, producing high value type of nipa wine no with santori uh yun ang tinitingnan namin thank na you, possibility uh, thank you po sir ah uh, siguro uh, can i consult you mamaya yes. kasi parang ang mura po kasi ang 8000 per square meter for hmm. a, IQ, a QMS or ISO certified na building yes thank you po of course ah uh, dr santos may we ask you to share dr santos is a director yeah, of freedom i'm, I'm uh, lobby santos and i am very glad that we have friends from uh, filmic I think this uh, one very important uh, concern of our mechanization also in this uh, NIPA processing. Uh, actually, what we need, uh, uh, the equipment that we need right now is the mechanical dryer, which uh, we, we purchased in uh, Cebu, cost uh, more than 200,000. It's a mechanical digital type. No? And also a mechanical mixer, approximately 350,000. But the 50 square meter size of the building can be divided into two. The 25 square meter could be the storage and the 25 uh, square meter is uh, the cooking facility. The cooking facility. And you can expand that into three mechanical uh, uh, cooking jar. No? Uh, it's a mixer, mechanical mixer. And uh, you can add more uh, depending on the supply of the sap. In terms of uh, FDA requirement, I think it will comply for the meantime because uh, the, the supply of sap is very limited at the moment. Our capacity, at least we can produce more than 1,000 uh, 1, uh, kilos. Uh, but uh, as long as uh, we, we encourage the, the farmers to supply uh, more, we can immediately expand the production. The second floor can be uh, a more uh, storage facility, but uh, I would like to add that one of our facility in uh, Lanusa in Surigao del Sur 
uh, receive a grant from uh, the Climate Change Commission uh, People Survival Fund. Uh, they, uh, they were granted five million uh, worth of uh, uh, facility for sugar and uh, winemaking. So I think, uh, and uh, they are uh, aside from five million worth building, they are also locating two million worth of uh, uh, equipment and uh, cooking facilities. So I think uh, that one uh, could be uh, a more uh, viable uh, option for expansion. But uh, also, we would like to inform you that uh, we have we are conducting inventory of NIPA stands uh, at least in selected uh, uh, five provinces. So far, uh, the yield of our uh, inventory is that uh, in a dense uh, area for one hectare, there is at least uh, 10,000 NIPA stands. And uh, mature fruiting and flowering is approximately 12%. So in one year, you have 1,200 NIPA stands. And it, it can supply uh, one liter or two liters per tree per day. So which means we can produce at average of 200 Per day, we can produce 200 liters minimum per day. So with a total value of approximately 360,000 pesos per hectare that, to get the sap. So that's the uh, rough estimate of the economic value for uh, NIPA sap. Thank you. Okay, pa. So one last question, sir. Okay lang. Anyway, po, later on, um, if ever naman po you need other details, pa, you can visit their booth. Pa. So ma'am, last question. Pa. Are related then, so okay na. May question pa po? Ay, yes ma'am. Last question. Good morning. Um, since uh, yung nipa sugar po is like in demand in American and European countries, right? Kaya parang you're focusing your market to foreign. Is it true? Um, yes. Do you ever plan to like expand your market locally? Of course. Um, like in making it available to local supermarkets. Of course, uh, that is that has always been there. But the reason why we have looked at export first because the inquiry from our prospective customers came from uh, foreign uh, interested foreign buyers. Do nagsimula po yan. And then nung tinig na namin kaya naman namin mamimit yung standard sila except that we don't have yet the uh, FDA. We're waiting for that. It should come out in two weeks' time, no? After, uh, what, six months since we applied. Uh, medyo matagal lang talaga ang waiting time ng FDA. Um, considering that, um, wait, what is your, like, um, edge or competitive advantage among other sugars, like Muscovado sugar and also yung mga sugars na yung plain lang? Kasi parang, Diba, nipa sugar is compared to the refined sugars na normal lang is way yung price niya is way higher so paano yung maaano yung demand? Ganun? First, we compare apples to apples not apples to oranges there's a distinct di difference between the two because for one uh, if you're looking at cane sugar as your uh, main reference point take, take note that this product is not really classified as sugar. It is classified as a sweetener. There is a big difference between the two because uh, the, the production processes, the chemical compositions, and the health benefits of that as compared to uh, uh, NIPA sugar, there is really a wide difference between the two. In terms of glycemic index count, no? In GI count, so sa mga diabetic dito, ako, I am a diabetic. That's why I take this matter of really uh, managing my sugar. The best way to manage this is to not take refined sugar. Because uh, it's been proven medically that your uh, sugar uh, uh, products have higher uh, GI. Na, nasa 60 to 90 po yan, ang accepted na threshold ng Philippine Medical Association it's 50 and below. Ang, ang nipa sugar is 30 to 35. Just like around the range of cocoa sugar. Um, okay, a follow-up question. Uh, pero hindi naman po risky to actually really expand in the local market. Pardon? It is not really that risky to expand in the local market. Well, in business. In business. 
you're in business yeah. to make money, di ba? Yes, Not sir. to lose money. Yeah. So, if you are going to make money, how will you answer your question? Um, there could be areas, but just, oh, I wanted to ask like your confidence with this. Because remember, getting into business, it's got to be demand-driven. You do not produce a product if it's not demand-driven. There are two facets into doing business. One, it's got to be market-led. Second, it has to be financially viable. Other than that, you know, it will be a losing proposition. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you, Paul. Uh, let's give a round of applause, Paul, for Mr. Baralta.